guys. So this is a quick video demo on what to do with your staycation kit. If you got that gift from the Circadia promo that they're running for all my clients who can't get in for a skin treatment with me, you're going to do your own at home. So I wanted to just run through really quickly. I know you got directions with your products, but um, sometimes it helps to see. Um, so everything that you got included that we're going to be using today is the lipid replacing gel cleanser. Um, if you see my sizes, they're obviously the bigger ones because um, they're not in the mini facial kit, but it's all the same. You also got your caviar lime passion fruit enzyme. You got your marshmallow whip hydrating mask. You got your vitamin C reversal serum in a little vial. You got light day SPF and you got post peel bomb. Again, these are my big sizes, but this is what you have in your little kit. Lipid replacing gel cleanser is the first product that you're going to be using for your cleanse. I did that part already because I don't have a sink in here. So just when you're going through your facial process, you're going to take a couple minutes to cleanse twice. Your first cleanse is going to remove any oil, sweat, makeup, anything else that's on your skin. Your second cleanse is actually going to cleanse your skin. So you're going to uh, dispense about a dime size amount in your hand, lather it up with some lukewarm water, massage your face gently one to two minutes. Don't forget your neck up behind your ears. Rinse that well, and then repeat it a second time. Um, you can leave your skin damp. There's no reason to really dry it. I never do that in the treatment room while it's damp. You want to apply your exfoliating step, which is your enzyme, because the water is actually going to help activate the enzymes. Enzymes love heat, and they love moisture so that they can work on the skin. So I'm going to just take a serving size of the caviar lime into a small dish. Yours is already portioned out for one treatment, so you don't need to do that. Now you have bromelain in here, which is an ingredient that comes from pineapple. So that's going to help break down dead skin cells at the surface so that you can remove them when it's time to remove. And you also have passion fruit and caviar lime, which has some alpha hydroxy acids in it just to polish the surface of the skin um, really gently because they're not going to penetrate so deeply um, as some other stronger ingredients. So that's why as an at-home treatment, this is a perfect choice. So there's a fan brush that came in your kit, just like I have here, and you're going to use this for your application. Um, there's two things you want to remember about the enzyme as you're applying. So I'm going to go ahead and apply it to my skin while I'm explaining that to you. You want to have a nice thin application over your entire uh, face. Now some um, areas have a little bit more than others. That's not really going to make too much of a difference as to um, how deeply it's going to penetrate as long as it's covering everywhere. You do want to avoid your eye area. If you have a more resilient skin type, you can get up close to the orbital bone. Um, but if you don't, you want to stay further away from it than even I went. You might want to go like just underneath. I can get closer because I do these treatments all the time. My skin's used to it. But um, you're going to want to be careful with that. Now, the other sensitive areas of the skin are right here around the nose and just right by the mouth. So if you're sensitive, you want to avoid those areas when you apply. It's really normal to feel some tingliness or some heat when the enzyme is on. That just means it's, it's activated and it's doing its job and that's normal. Now, if it's uncomfortable for you, you can go ahead and remove it um, sooner than the amount of time that is recommended to leave it on because um, you don't want to sit uncomfortable. But if you, um, have had facial treatments with me before you've already had some of these products on your face so chances are you're going to tolerate them just fine i always come down just under the jaw this is an area that could be prone to breakouts and congestion for some people and if not you still want to polish that area up anyway you're going to take the excess down to the neck and then pull your lips in so you can get just above That area and of course the nose so you want to start time um, it's going to be between 7 and 10 minutes I leave mine on for 10 but again depending on your skin if you're noticing any sensitivity or flushing you may want to remove a little bit early now here's what I'm going to recommend for the manipulation of the enzyme I'm going to continue using the brush um, and I recommend that you do also 
unless you have um, like a glove that you want to put on your hand because what I learned the hard way um, when I was working with enzymes on myself is I wouldn't glove my hands and I would manipulate it all around my face, just my hands. But um, as the enzyme was getting on my hands from my face, it was also breaking down the skin on my hands in addition to my face. So I'd end up with these really peely palms and fingers and then realized it's from the enzyme. So um, don't massage this around your face with bare hands unless you want that peeling also of your of your hands. You could either put on a glove and manipulate it that way or just go ahead and use the brush and very gently, small feathery strokes, just get it moving around. That also helps you tolerate it a little bit better because um, when it's being moved, it just doesn't have as much of a itchy sensation like you want to scratch your face. And if you are experiencing that, again, that's normal. Be careful when you get around your eye if you're manipulating with your brush. You don't want to flick that in your eye. Upward and downward strokes. Very light when you come down. You can put a little bit more pressure when you go up. If you're using your hands, same idea. Now, I forgot to mention this when we started, but my favorite way to remove this, and you know this from your treatments with me, is with a hot towel. Um, so before you even started with your cleanse and application, if you have a um, washcloth or a like a bigger type of dish towel, you can um, wet it with some hot water and either microwave it for a few seconds, or you can just boil a small little saucepan of water and um, let it sit in there until it's time to do the removal. And what we're gonna do is press that hot towel on the face to help pick up this enzyme and the skin cells that it's removing with it. Um, if you don't wanna do that, that's fine. You could just rinse with lukewarm water too, but it's more of a spa experience when you use the hot towel. Everybody loves that part. So it's only been three minutes. I'm probably just gonna go to five on this video for the sake of time so that we can get to the marshmallow mask that's gonna come next. If it starts to disappear on your face, don't worry. You'll be able to pick it up with the towel. Creases of nose. And the neck. Okay, so let's pretend you're at home and seven or 10 minutes has gone by and now it's time to remove. You're gonna open up your hot towel and just press it and hold it onto your face just to emulsify, warm and moisten some of that product that has begun to dry over time. So I have towels that are already pre-made for facials. So they have that little gap for your face, but again, you can use anything that you have at home. And you're just gonna press gently. If you feel reactivation of your enzyme with the warm towel, um, that's normal. Remember that enzymes like heat and they like moisture. So if you experience that, they're just becoming more active because of the heat and the moisture and it's fine. So I pat first, just get everything moistened and then I go into wipe. So you're going to lift up and away from the eyes up and out and as you're doing this there is a rhythm to it you do want to take your strokes out to the perimeter of the face because that's where lymph is draining and you just want to encourage that pathway down through here down through here
you'll notice flushing, a little bit of circulation that's totally normal and you actually want that. The more circulation you have at the surface of your skin, the better your skin's gonna receive the ingredients that you're gonna follow with. And once you're all picked up, if you wanna follow with a cool rinse, you can. I'm not going to, but if you want to, it's totally fine. Don't forget the entire neck area that you also brought product onto. If you do forget, you'll know because you will feel it. Enzymes do neutralize over time, so it's not like they'll continue working even if you do leave some behind, but you'll feel that itchiness on your skin. You wanna do this gently, just pressing. And out towards the perimeter. Make sure we're all picked up. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so now we're gonna portion out the Marshmallow Whip Hydrating Mask. I'm using about a half a teaspoon. You guys already have your stuff portioned out, so you don't need to worry about that. So now this mask looks and feels like a marshmallow because that's what's in it along with a lot of other skin conditioning and hydrating ingredients um this peptide in here that's going to stimulate hydration in your skin it's a really sophisticated product circadia uh, does a great job of combining nature and science so that you get the best of both worlds um, when you apply this you're going to find that it doesn't go on as smoothly as the enzyme, again, because it's like marshmallows. So you're gonna have to work with it a little bit, but once this is on your skin, you can touch it, <laughs> unlike the enzyme. So you're gonna be able to go in and move it around with your hands and not worry about peeling your hands. So really just get it on, and then we can go in and distribute it more evenly. Now, what you're going to notice when you start manipulating it is it's going to become kind of like a gommage. It kind of like jellies up and, um, and kind of can roll in your hands. And that in a way is acting like a physical, um, exfoliant, which is nice because you're following that with the enzyme that you just picked up off your face. Now with the marshmallow, you can totally get close to your eye because it's not going to be irritating. Don't get in your eyelashes because it's going to be a real pain in the butt to get off. Now what I do in the treatment room, and you can do also while you're at home, is whatever's left of the marshmallow mask, you can go right over the mouth because people's lips are always dehydrated and chapped this time of year. The other thing about all these formulas is there's nothing in it that's gonna hurt you in the event you ate a little by accident. <laughs> so if you go ahead and put some on your lips and it gets in your mouth a little bit, it's totally fine. I pull the rest of it down onto the neck and I'll work that with my hands also. Okay. So with this, really, um, the longer the better. So if you have the time, I mean, you're not going anywhere really, and you want to sit in this for 15 to 20 minutes, go for it. Um, watch TV, do something, and you can remove it after that. Um, if you're gonna manipulate, this is how I recommend using upward strokes so that you're working facial muscle tissue up in a lifting effect. Don't pull your face down. Circular motions are nice too, because like I said, it, it becomes like a gommage. So when you're doing circular motions, you're getting that exfoliation. Notice when I'm going in circles, I'm not pulling my face all around. I'm just kind of gliding on the surface, 
but when I lift, I'm picking up my face. So two things to think about. Same thing around the eyes, out to the perimeter and lifting from the nose up and out. Now, if you feel some activity with the mask, it's because it has a peptide in it, a hydrating peptide. Peptides are like proteins for the skin. And when they're active, which they are, um, you'll feel it. You'll feel that, that activity on your face, like you just gave it a vitamin. So if you feel that, you're just picking up on it and there's nothing wrong. When you go around your eyes, you wanna lift and open. Got in my eyebrows, and if it gets in yours, you're gonna see what I mean when you try to remove it. It's a little bit of a pain in the butt, but if you have a, um, like a terry cloth, um, washcloth, that tends to pick it up well. We'll do one more pass along, and then I'll be removing mine, again, not with the full time, just so we can get through it and you know what you're doing at home. Neck, all lifting, except right around the ears. You can go down just lightly because that's where lymph is draining as well. So you could pull down just around the earlobe and down towards the collarbone very gently. If you have tension in those muscles there, you're going to feel it when you do this movement. It'll actually be relaxing, so you could do that a few times. Again, with circular motions, you could see how it gums up like I was talking about. So that's exfoliating to the skin in a really gentle way. Lift around the cheekbones, open the eyes. Okay, time for this to come off. So again, a hot towel is the best way to emulsify this because it'll kind of melt it a little bit and then it wipes off easier. But if you just try to rinse this straight in the sink without any of that emulsifying, it's really not gonna work out that well. <laughs> So you're gonna to wanna to, uh, press a warm towel into it first. So just press gently. And then you can go back and actually go in for your removal. If you have microfiber, it's gonna be much better because it's gonna be softer. Um, but if you don't and you are working with terry cloth, just um, be sure to be really gentle because that can be kind of rough. Now, even though I said it would be fine to rinse the skin after you remove the enzyme, I wouldn't do that once you remove this mask because it's going to leave behind that peptide that I was talking about and some other skin hydrating ingredients and um, antioxidants. So you don't wanna necessarily rinse all of that. You do wanna get the gummy marshmallow off, but what's left behind is nourishing and um, you wanna let your skin kind of bathe in that. So I would not follow this step with a rinse. Don't forget the mouth if you put it on your lips. Down the neck if you brought it there. around the hairline.
And then if you just gently pass around, that you'll feel if there's anything left over. Ooh, so soft. Okay, and now you're gonna finish this off with vitamin C, hyaluronic acid, SPF, and post peel. Your vitamin C serum is in that hyaluronic acid base, so you want your skin to be damp from that removal, so your hyaluronic acid has something to stick to and bind to. You only need like half a dime size amount for that on your fingertips and just press it and pat it in. Look at the eyes, forehead, and whatever's left, of course, come in around the neck. Now, if you took too much, you could do decollete or the back of your hands because nothing sees more daylight than your face and the back of your hands. So take care of those two. Okay, next. You have post peel and you have SPF. You can put them on one at a time, but my favorite thing to do with them is to cocktail them together. So a little bit of post peel balm, which is super hydrating and moisturizing. It's very rich, so you don't need a lot. Like, I don't know, two pea size amounts. A little bit of the SPF. Yours is in a little trial size jar, not a pump, but all together it's about that much. I cocktail them together on my fingertips and then take the, whoops. That's that part that kind of dries up in the, in the pump. Okay. So I press this around first, make sure it gets everywhere. And then I go in and manipulate it. You can get by your eyes with this, it's not gonna bother you. And you might be asking, well, what if it's nighttime. Do I need that SPF step? Of course not. Um, or what if I'm not going out? I'm just in my house, not going anywhere. Do I need the SPF? Um, I mean, generally no, but if it's daylight out and you might go out for a walk or to run an errand, if you're even doing that, um, I would because you just exfoliated your skin with an enzyme. So you have premature skin cells at the surface right now. Um, you don't have that layer of protection anymore because you just removed it, which is why you're gonna be soft and you're gonna be glowing because you exfoliated that. So um, you're gonna be much more sensitive to the sun. So even if you go out for a walk or you're sitting in an office or a room where you're getting a lot of light, you do want that protection. It's not that you're gonna get a sunburn, but again, there are premature skin cells at the surface now, which is why it looks glowy and it feels soft. So um, you do wanna protect that. So unless it's nighttime, unless you're literally doing this before bed, yes, you use your SPF, okay? And I think I got everything, mostly. Never worked like directly in the phone screen, but I think that's everything. Okay, and that's it. So that's your mini at-home facial treatment um, that you can do for yourself until you get to see me again, which is hopefully soon. Um, Stay tuned on my social pages or on your email if you get my newsletter to hear about when um, I'll be open again, when we're allowed downtown again. And um, I really hope it's not more than a couple weeks, but if it is, I'll come back on here to coach you guys through some more um, at-home skincare things that you could do, okay? So stay well, stay healthy, stay glowing, and um, like I've been saying, keep your skin and your hopes bright, okay? Bye-bye.